Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we are testing out the Beta FPV's FPV Racing Starter Kit. So this kit is meant for a beginner who wants to get started in flying FPV drones. But of course, anybody can have some fun with this setup. Now the kit contains the Beta 65S Lite Tiny Hoop Drone here, the Lite Radio 2, and the VR01 FPV goggles. The Beta 65S Lite Tiny Hoop Drone is a 65 millimeter brushed motored FPV flyer with 7 by 16 millimeter brushed motors. The price is $43.99 by itself. So it's got four bladed props and it also comes with four extra props and it comes fully assembled and ready to fly. It has the Beta FPV Lite flight controller with the silverware firmware, so there is no need to do any configuration at all. It has a built-in receiver in the Bayang Toys protocol. Although not great, it has a built-in video transmitter. And the FPV camera is the CO1 FPV camera. It is a one-third inch CMOS censored 2.1 millimeter lens, 1200 TV line, 160 degree field of view FPV camera. Now this quadcopter will weigh in at just 25 grams. So the FPV drone itself is all pre-configured and it is ready to fly. The transmitter is the Light Radio 2 transmitter. It is a $39.99 value transmitter. It is a eight channel OpenTX firmware power transmitter. The power button is right up in the front, long press to power on. There's a haptic feedback and another long press to power off. It has two two-way switches and it has two three-way switches. The SA switch is the arming switch. So up to arm and down to this arm. And the SB switch is the mode switch. Down is for acro mode and up is for angle mode or the level mode. The other two switches are not programmed. It has very nice hobby grade gimbals and it has a very nice velvety texture finish. Now this transmitter can easily be considered as a hobby grade transmitter. It is however preset to only the Bayang Toys protocol. Now in the rear there is the setup and the bind button. The bind button needs to be pressed every time the drone is powered up which is a bit of a hassle. Now on the bottom is the trainer port and the micro USB charge port. It comes with a rechargeable, replaceable 350 milliamp 2S battery. The FPV goggles are the VR01 FPV goggles. It sells for $54.99 as a standalone FPV goggles. It has dual antennas. Now the display is a 4.3 inch 800 by 480 pixel LCD screen display. There's also a Fresnel lens to magnify the display screen, just like any other box style FPV goggles. Now the foam sponge face plate is comfortable enough for all day use. And it comes with a three point adjustable headband. It weighs in at 375 grams and has a built in 2000 milliamp battery that is good for about a two hour use. It has 40 channels and it also has a playback feature, which is just awesome. So here is the micro USB port to charge it up. It has a headphone jack and a micro SD card slot that'll support up to a 32 gigabyte micro SD card. So it even has a built-in DVR, which is awesome. Charge it up using a 2 amp, 5 volt or lower power source to charge. It has a auto scan feature. It has a power 
slash menu button. It also has a built-in speaker, a button to change bands, also doubles as the volume up and fast four wine, and the button to change channels. It also doubles as the volume down and fast rewind at playback. There's a record button and some LED light indicators. So to get ready to fly, charge up the remote control and charge up the FPV goggles, then charge up these two batteries. The batteries are the 300 milliamp high voltage 1S batteries. Now the kit also comes with a USB charge dongle. Now it has an LCD display and two PH2 ports to charge up, two batteries at the same time. Now this little charger is a really fast charger. I have other chargers that'll charge up this type of one cell batteries and they pale in comparison to this little charger. Now this little charger has two ports. One is the tester slash out one port and it will display the current voltage of the battery. There you go. Now the out two port just charges up the battery. So there's a red LED light per port while it's charging and it'll change to a green LED light once it is fully charged. Now these batteries are good for about a three minute flight each. Now the total price of this kit, if bought separately, is $138.97. Now the starter kit is priced at $129.99, which is a savings of just $8.98. But it does come with two batteries, a dual battery charger, extra set of props, and also a nice zippered carrying case. So once everything is charged up, power on the FPV goggles, power on the remote control, and power on the 65S light. Hold the throttle stick down and press the bind button on the remote control. The power button on the remote control will flash and the 65S light will have a green LED light that will also flash. Once the flashing lights stop, you are now ready to fly. All right, so here we are ready for a line of sight test flight. Now we are going to start off in angle mode or the auto leveling mode. And surprisingly, it does have a decent amount of power. Now the remote controller is perfect for people who use just thumbs to control the sticks. And the controller is very accurate and has minimum amount of latency as well. Now this is the mode you want to begin flying as a first time pilot of an FPV flyer. And it is also important to actually see how the drone behaves in line of sight. So when it is time for the FPV goggles, you will have an idea how the drone is flying. And since it has the seven by 16 millimeter brushed motors, it does have enough power to move around as you can see. So for those of you who pinch or like me, hybrid pinch, the controller is big enough for you to do that also. and it is a speedy little tiny hoop. So here I bring it in to switch over to Acro mode, turning off the power, switching to Acro mode, and arming the motors and taking off once again. Oh! The auto leveling is gone in acro mode and you must manually control the drone's stability and its flight. Now the silverware firmware seems to be working very well and the drone handles really nice and smooth. Acro mode will allow the drone to do manual flips in all directions and looks like the 65S Lite is a perfect little drone to practice flips and rolls. 
Now, it does have enough power to catch itself and recover from a flip, but prolonged flips will test its limits, so quicker flips are more ideal for this drone. Very nice, very smooth. Nice quick flips. Catches itself really nicely. And very easy to fly. Oh, yeah, there you go. Prolonged flips will test its limits. And I think it passed the durability test as well. So with its ducted fan design of a tiny hoop, the props are well protected and it is a perfect quadcopter for a beginner. Now you can also change modes while in the air also. So here I change from acro to angle mode in mid-flight, which is a lot easier to fly. Perfect for acro practice gone wrong and recover to retake control. Now you also need to keep in mind the flight time is about three minutes for this battery. So we'll bring it in before the battery runs dry. Now here is a recorded video from the built-in DVR of the VR01 FPV goggles of the very first FPV flight. Now the resolution of the recorded video is 640 by 480 pixels at 30 frames per second. Now the videos are recorded in three minute segments, so longer flights will need two video segments joined together. I am flying it in angled mode or the level mode here at the moment. Now notice that there are a lot of static, but the static does get better as it comes closer to myself and the FPV goggles. So it is either the video transmitter that is not that good or the FPV goggles that is not that good. Now also the recorded video records slightly more static than what I was looking at while flying. See like right there, I would not have made it through that if this was what I was seeing. So definitely a lot of static on the recorded video but slightly less while you're using the goggles so here i bring it in to change over to acro mode taking off so the 65s behaves really nice in acro mode and it is very smooth and it is very easy to handle only if there were less static though So right about here is where the video clips join together, as you can see that. And it looked like the video got a little bit better, but it is just about the same. Ooh, nice and smooth roll right there. And not so smooth on that one. So the 65S does have some yaw spin outs. And power loop gone bad. <laughs> and it almost touched the ground. Here's another power loop. A little bit better, a little bit more altitude. So faster flips and rolls and not prolonged flips and rolls. But I was determined to get one good power loop, but it just didn't happen. So as you can see, it passed another durability test. Another try, oh, almost. Yeah, now it's kind of flying a little bit wobbly here and there. 
and a nice little roll there. So bringing it in for a landing and the flight time is right about three minutes. Now here's a recording of another flight from my Fat Shark FPV goggles this time. And it does look a bit better than the VR01 FPV goggles, but there are still a little bit of static. So what I can say here is this almost represents what I am looking through the FPV goggles while wearing the VR01 FPV goggles. So the Fat Shark FPV goggles is doing a lot better job at recording the flight video versus the VR01 FPV goggles. A lot less static, although there are some, but there's not massive static segments. So here is the same exact flight as recorded from my Headplay FPV goggles this time. And as you can see by now, although slightly better than the VR01 FPV goggles, it is slightly worse than the Fat Shark FPV goggles. And now here is the same exact flight as seen through the recorded video of the VR01 FPV goggles. So as you can see, the recorded video is very staticky. Now, I have to stress the fact that what I see in the FPV goggles is not as staticky. But the recorded video, not very good. As you can see here, massive amount of static. Now, I'm not sure why, but for some reason, this particular flight's recording from the VR01 FPV goggles is worse than any other recording that I've had thus so far. So here I test out the FPV goggles, the VR01 FPV goggles that came in the starter kit with the Emacs Tiny Hawk 2 freestyle drone. And as you can see, the video quality is much better. So I think we can conclude that it is somewhat the FPV goggles recording capability, but the video transmitter in the all-in-one flight controller that needs improvement more. Now, there is supposed to be an upgraded version of this starter kit coming in mid-December, I think, and I do hope that they do improve on the video transmitter 
since it is the only thing that is preventing this starter kit from being a really good starter kit. Now I've watched some other reviewers of the starter kit and I have not come across a video with clean FPV footage. So there is definitely a weak link on the VTX. So as you can see, the VR01 FPV goggles records just fine if used with other FPV flyers with better VTX. So here is another flight with all original gear from the starter kit. Now, it looks so much better than the previous flight. So remember that what I see in the FPV goggles is better than the recorded video as well. Now, I'm not sure what causes it to record worse than what you see on the monitor screen, but Hopefully that is also fixed in the upcoming newer version of this starter kit as well. But then again, when I flew the Tiny Hawk, it did just fine. So all in all, I will give the Light Radio 2 transmitter a thumbs up and the VR01 FPV goggles in this kit a thumbs up as well. But the 65S Lite does need to be improved in the VTX department for sure. So that'll do it for this video of the Beta FPV's FPV Racing Starter Kit. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Have a great day and we'll see you again next time.